Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending whether you're watching this as a recording or you're watching us uh, live, or also depending on the time zone uh, that you are in. Today we keep uh, uh, celebrating uh, Bullying Prevention Month and also uh, European uh, Cyber uh, Security Month. Uh, and for that purpose, we have been during throughout this month, we've been uh, doing some live streams on topics uh, related to, to cyberbullying. And uh, today is uh, no uh, exception. So... <clears throat> will be uh, addressing a very uh, interesting uh, topic related to youth empowerment and leadership to stop uh, cyberbullying. But before uh, introducing uh, our guests, uh, let me say that uh, I'm speaking to you from uh, Portugal, from the city of Porto, which is in the northern part uh, of uh, Portugal. And uh, I already see that we have some people uh, watching us. Uh, Bilio Carvalho uh, says that he was looking for the complaints book for the delay because we started a few minutes uh, uh, late. Uh, Adelina Silva is saying uh, boa noite, which means good evening in uh, Portuguese. So uh, welcome, Abilio, welcome, uh, Adelina. And also, uh, Antonio João Silva says, uh, good evening from Braga, which is even further north uh, in Portugal. So welcome, uh, João. Uh, <clears throat> just for those uh, who are here with us, uh, but uh, are not familiar with uh, who I am. Uh, I'm the co-author of a book named Cyberbullying, a Guide for Parents and uh, Educators. And just before uh, we were starting uh, this session, uh, I was uh, speaking with some uh, of our guests that I'm going to, to introduce uh, right away. And I'll start with uh, the two guests uh, that we have from Canada. Welcome, Heather and Roisin. It's a pleasure to, to have you here. Uh, and uh, feel free to say hi to those uh, who are uh, watching us and following us. Hi, Tito. Thanks for um, giving us a call here in Canada this evening. I'm Heather. This is my daughter, Roisin. <laughs> and uh, hello to everyone watching online. Where on Canada are you uh, speaking from? We're in Prince Edward Island, which is a small island on the east coast, um, on the in the on the Atlantic side. So we're uh, we're just a small little island, but probably the prettiest place to be in Canada. Agree with you. Uh, let me just give a short introduction to uh, Roisin, your daughter. Do you want to say hi and good afternoon or good evening to those who are following us? Um, hi. Hi, okay. So <laughs> let me just say a few words on, on Roisin. She got involved in trying to stop cyberbullying in November 2004. 13 and as a result she came up with the idea of posted positive the precursor of the share you care a campaign run by kids we'll be talking about this uh, further on though but uh, i would like also uh, to bring uh, our other uh, guest into the room perry Halftab from the us hi perry how are you welcome to the show <laughs> hi tito can you hear me now I can hear you perfectly. Oh, good. And hi, Heather. Hi, Roisin. <laughs> it takes a while to get Roisin to start talking, but once she does, everything she says is very valuable. So it's worth the wait. <laughs> Great. So let me just introduce you, Perry. Uh, Perry is an American digital privacy and security lawyer who operates globally, advising industry, governments, and policymakers. She was one of the world's first cyber lawyers before they were called cyber lawyers, actually. In the early days of the web, she began to focus on digital best practices, cyber safety, and cyber crime prevention policy and policy. Uh, following her years as a Wall Street uh, hostile takeover and mergers and acquisitions and international corporate lawyer. So uh, I, I also 
to those that are following us, particularly from those that are following us from Portugal, that uh, when I started my internet safety project back in 2013, there were no content in, in Portuguese. And Perry was my, hold my hand and teach me much of what I do know and what I've learned was with her. Many times using a tool that nowadays, I guess almost nobody uses, which is called IRC, Internet <laughs> Relay Chat. And it used to get lessons and teachings uh, through uh, IRC. So uh, those times were just text now we have uh, voice and we have uh, video. So we've come a really, really big way. Uh, and that was 2003, so it's almost uh, 20 years. And I know that you go even more uh, back than that. <laughs> well, so tells you how old I, tells you how old I am, Tito. No, nah, it tells us how much you know. That tells us <laughs> how much you know, not how, how old you are. And all of your viewers and fans from around the world need to know that I might have gotten you started in 2003, but you pretty much ran things after that. And anything we did in Portuguese, anything we did in Spanish, anything we did in Portugal or anything, any place around the world, you were leading. So thank you. Mm. Thank you. Uh, we also have other people joining these uh, few minutes uh, early minutes are usually to say hi to those who are following us. Antonio João Silva says, good afternoon, Heather and uh, Roisin, and also good evening, uh, Perry. <laughs> uh, we also have Edith. Edith Utati is following us, uh, and she's been participating in the sessions that we've held in, in English, uh, and she's following us from Zimbabwe in Africa, so that's nice. quite a long way. Mm -hmm. So we are spread across three continents, you know, Americas, Europe, and Africa. That is great. And Susana Pimentel is also following us from uh, Portugal. So welcome, Susana. Welcome, Edith. And let's start the show. And to start the show, <clears throat> I was try, try, I would ask uh, Roisin if she could tell us the story, how she met Perry, and how the idea of uh, post-positive... Um, my mom took me to a conference about cyberbullying, and I met Perry there, and I thought that it was easy to stop bullying because I was only six. But so I thought of something that would teach younger kids how to be safe online called post-positive. Okay. Well, she was seven. Tito, she was seven at the time. And, wow. and I remember the first time we spoke, she actually had watched a session with her mother's special permission of mm -hmm. the parents of Retea Parsons, who was a young girl in Halifax, Nova Scotia, who ended up taking her own life after she had been bullied and cyberbullied. And Roisin at seven watched all of this. And she came to me and she said, if words can hurt so much, words can help equally well and that's mm -hmm. where it came from wow that's really wise you know and that that goes to to show uh how much we have to learn from youth and from kids and and from teens if uh, they are given the opportunity to uh to teach us to tell us, uh, you know, uh, what their views are on these uh, such uh, important important topics. But one of the things I find surprising is uh, when uh, Roisin was seven, uh, she wasn't using uh, social media, you know, uh, Facebook or Twitter or things like those. And and I seem to remember that uh, the idea came to write post-it notes. Uh, on the school uh, walls, uh, I think positive post-it notes on, on the school notes, on the school uh, walls. I, I, is that uh, right, uh, Roisin? Yes. What about yeah. the air project? Um, I had a lighthouse and I got everybody from my school to write something nice on a sticky note. So mm -hmm. the lighthouse. And then my mom posted on social media and we got people from around the world to do that. 
And you used to mail them out with your classmates, remember? <laughs> now, did you put them on anything special that's special to Prince Edward Island? The big lighthouse. Yes. Yeah. It's a six foot lighthouse in her school. Well, it's been to a few schools covered with post it notes from around the world. And it's. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so the opportunity to in a sort of way, you were lighting up the way for other teens to do projects similar to the world, to the ones that uh, you had the idea to, to develop. That's a, that's huge. That's really, really great. And uh, I also seem to remember that uh, the project uh, then uh, was changed the name for um, post positive to uh, share your care. Perhaps uh, you as a lawyer, uh, Perry, can give us some insights on how that happened. Yeah, well, we loved the name Post It Positive, and there was actually yeah. a teenager from, I think it was Vancouver or Seattle, um, and who had stolen uh, Roisin's idea, and she <laughs> called it Post It Positive, and a 3M, who manufacturers post-its heard about it they gave her some money and they gave her some air cover and media and I was a little concerned because it was our program so I reached out to people I knew at 3M and it took them six months to tell us that they thought it was an infringement we had to change our name so we did but it never picked up the momentum it had when we called it post-it positive so I think perhaps it's time to revisit that with our friends at 3M Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, the name the name is definitely great and uh, has a positive definitely a positive uh, spin on it so uh, no doubt the, the connect words a stroke a core of uh, people we have uh, Ana Luisa Rodriguez uh, joining us also she's joining us from Evra in Alentejo which is uh, southern Portugal it's a, also a beautiful part uh, of the country, and she thanks us for uh, this uh, opportunity. And we thank you, Ana Luisa, uh, to take your time in, in an evening. Uh, we will probably have other things also to do, and you find in time to, to join us. Edith uh, Uteti from uh, Zimbabwe is saying, Perry, Heather, and Roisin, great to meet you. Looking forward to learning more from all of you, especially Roisin. So you see, Roshin, we're already gathering uh, a following for uh, your uh, website and for your uh, social uh, media uh, presence. And okay. nowadays, you, you have uh, uh, your sayings. Perry, feel free to interrupt me. No, no well, problem. And you too, Heather. For a second here, Tito, because I, I wanted Roshin to explain one of the one of the outcomes from. So she started with it, working with her classmates when she was in grade two, three, four. You know, they all knew that this in her school about this project and other schools did. But tell them what's happened now that everyone's on social media, because this is the next part that gets interesting. You know, they, they started learning about this when they were quite young and especially Roisin with Perry. And so now what happens with your friends that didn't have lessons or didn't know about cyberbullying or safety? Mm -hmm. What do they do? What's the common thread now? To you, what do your friends want from you? Um, they they text me for advice on what to do when something happens to them on social media. I love it. Are oh. you charging them for the advice, Roisin? <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's great because it goes to show that, that like, sh if you teach your kids before they're online, they're they're really prepared. Like she's, I mean, Roisin's unique because she's been under Perry now for a while. But to be 13 and being the go-to for people older than her and, and at different schools, you know, like that's because she learned early and she was she knew it before things happened to her. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, I'm getting credit for this, but I think the credit really belongs with Heather. Um, and Heather has always had a great approach to raising incredibly bright and creative kids. Because uh, Roisin's not the only one at home who's changing the world. Um, but Heather has always allowed her to have all of the information and then helped her frame it. So Roisin over the years has, she's won a 
big award from the Office Depot Foundation. And on November 1st, she and Heather are going out to speak um, at the ICANN meetings in Montreal, representing kids online and the things that need to happen. So it's wonderful when you've been working with somebody for six years and they're experts on their own and you don't need to tell them anything anymore. They're actually telling you. Absolutely. And that's uh, one of the things, uh, you know, uh, if we look at the Convention of Children's Rights, uh, it says, I believe, in Article 12, the children have the right uh, to be heard on uh, items on issues that uh, affect them today in their in, and in their future so this is one area where i think uh, we really should listen to to children and and they have the right to be to be heard they have the right to have uh, the means available so that they can express uh, their ideas in one hand and where they can also report situations uh, of, uh, of bullying so that uh, adults in schools uh, learn uh, about it. Uh, <clears throat> we also have uh, Gloria Silva, uh, she's joining us from uh, Bayon. Bayon is a small uh, city or village uh, in, uh, around uh, Porto. So welcome, Gloria. Nice to have you, and I, it's great to see you uh, on the uh, on the show. Uh, Perry, I would like to know. You, you've been doing this uh, since uh, quite a while. You know, yeah, so, twenty-five so, years. Yeah. So, uh, how did you start feeling? that it would be important to give children a, a voice and to bring them into the discussion. Well, it was interesting. When we first started, as you know, uh, we started to protect children from the evils of uh, other people online, the sex trafficking of children. I saw an image of a three-year-old being molested online. And that's what caused me to give up my law practice and to create our first internet safety charity. And we have a new one that you're part of. Um, Tito, as you know, it's a cyber safety group and it'll be running cybersafety.org. And I hope that Rasheen will provide some advice to teens and tweens there. But when I was writing one of my books, I realized that we didn't have the voice of the kids. So I got five kids from a girl's school not far from where I live in New Jersey. And they were wonderful. And the youngest of those was 13. She's now a senior partner on cyber law in New York. And they helped provide the youth perspective and the energy that we needed. Um, but Roisin was one of the youngest we've ever had, starting at seven. She's one of the smartest we've ever had. And she used to talk a lot more when she was younger than she does now, but know that uh, she she does a lot of planning and a lot of thinking and a lot of deep thinking. Um, and she has come up with so many ideas and so many perspectives that we followed around the world. And now her younger brother is going to be one of our cyber safety secret agents, um, joining my eight-year-old grandson. And they've got a secret handshake and they do over and out and things like that. So Roisin is, is training others. But she's always had the heart to make the world a better place. So we'll see if we can get her to mm -hmm. talk a little bit. Roisin, how important is it to give young people their voice, not just bring them so they stand next to you, make it look like you're involving kids, but actually give them a voice? So you know when, when you're with Perry, <laughs> <laughs> just give me a second, Perry. You're not in the room. It's tough. Oh, okay. Girl, I know it's hard to believe, but like she does have. <laughs> when you're in Ireland and the and you go to talk to the companies, why is it so important that the kids are talking to the companies, not just Perry? What do we always tell you guys? Well, she's shy. <laughs> because um, what happens when all the kids start talking to Microsoft and Facebook and Google and what happens in the room? She is very quiet. She, she didn't go to school. She's a little shy, and she Perhaps and I, I can, haven't spoken in a little while. But one of the Perhaps. things we learned with Roisin, I was we hosted a, a global Stop Cyberbullying Summit in Ireland over a two-day period a few years ago, and Roisin came out, and um, she was wonderful. And I was doing a television interview in Dublin, 
and uh, it might have been Limerick. And uh, the person was talking to me, and he says, "What well, do you speak? Do you speak Gaelic?" And I said, "No, I speak Spanish and a little Russian." And Rashid was sitting next to me. She said, "Well, I speak Gaelic," and that was it. She did the interview. She was amazing. She was, you know, knee high to a grasshopper, which is what we say. And, you know, this little kid who was doing the interview in Gaelic, and here she was from Canada. So that's Rosheen. Okay. Uh I think she might be feeling uh, somewhat uh, intimidated uh, because she doesn't know me. It's the first time that uh, we've been uh, speaking. Uh, but I would like to tell her one thing is uh, she can feel free to say whatever comes to her mind because uh, we're not uh, judging. This is not a competition. So, you know, even if you say some mistake, look at my at my, my pronunciation, you know. Uh, I'm sure you, 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 when you speak, you, you sound much better than uh, than I do. But there is a comment here that might also uh, help you uh, free your speech. And uh, Bill Carvalho says, nobody bullies in that shirt, Roisin. But how do your <laughs> colleagues react to your being an influencer? What do your friends think of the project? Mm -hmm. And all your work with Perry? I don't know. I think I'll be part of it. Your brother loves it. No. I know he's uh -huh. really funny. He's trying to get Lego to come in as a sponsor. He's a big Lego fan. We're working on it. I think the, okay. the, the, the with her work with Perry, because Perry's come and talked to her friends a lot. And Roisin, we have a girls group. And so um, part of the Friday nights, like when we were hosting it, we allowed them to keep their phones as long as they use their phones socially. And Roisin and I actually had to have some tough conversations with girls about their social media activities or whatever. And it's it's quite fascinating because I don't, as a parent who's not the parent of the other child, to say, you know, you got to be careful about the way you're posting those photos or, you know, who you're talking to. But I sit down and Roisin's the one giving mm -hmm. that advice. It's so much better than, than like, you know, the adult coming in and Roisin saying, you know what, this is this is a problem and why? And so she has that one-to-one -one with her friends that and and i think that's why they go to her because they trust her and they know that they you know like she she's gonna give them advice and i think i would be quite sure she would escalate it as needed because she's got a lot to say battles well, Roisin has done a lot with First Nation communities. And First Nation, uh, we called Native Americans in the United States. And in the olden days, they used to call them Indians. Um, and uh, Roisin's done a lot of work on reconciliation, on all of the crimes that have occurred to First Nation people in, in uh, Canada in particular. But you've done work with a lot of the kids who are First Nation, the Mi'kmaq in uh, PEI, haven't you, Roisin? Yes, sir. Are they seeing any cyberbullying? Um, I think they are, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is is there different advice that you would give to them than you would give to the other kids? No, I, I'd give them the same advice. And so underneath it all, they may look different and they may eat different food and 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 celebrate different things, but inside, aren't all kids kids? How, so how do we teach kids around the world who were saying, oh, I don't like you because you're in a wheelchair. Or, I don't like you because you're black or I don't like you because you're, I don't know, from wherever. How do we teach them to respect each other? Is there something we can say to remind them that kids underneath it all are the same? I think that uh, the title uh, of your project nowadays, Share You Care, uh, is the key, isn't it, Roisin? Uh, when, you know, caring about uh, one another, regardless uh, <clears throat> of our color, regardless of our religion, regardless of our uh, ethnicity, uh, you know, we're all gender, humans. And gender is new, too. Like, Sorry? Right? The gender, this is the, the, the gender question is where we have most of our conversations these days. Ah, uh, yeah, oh, absolutely. And the gender question, absolutely, absolutely. You know a lot more about that than I do, so I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's changing a lot. I, Rasheen, are you talking to politicians about what they should do? A bit. What do you tell them? 
Are you ever afraid of talking to them because they're like big deal politicians? Yeah. <laughs> do they listen to you? Yes, they do. So how do you approach them? How do we tell other kids that they can reach out to politicians and get their help? How do you, well, you do a couple of things so that they are always talking to you. What are some things that you do that other kids don't do on a regular basis? Question period? Um, I watch them at debates and. You show up? Show up. I, I need an advice from, from Roisin. Uh, the, on the uh, 31st of October will be the last day of uh, Bullying Prevention Month. And uh, we'll having, we're having a, a live stream uh, to, to close the month, to close these series of sessions that we've been doing uh, almost uh, every day. Not really every day, but uh, almost. And uh, <clears throat> we've invited the Portuguese Ministry uh, of Education to, to be a guest. Uh, because he has announced uh, uh, a bullying prevention uh, plan. But it's been 15 days and we're still waiting for uh, his uh, reply. And I've asked him, called his office, uh, and, you know, they just tell us that uh, we have to, to wait. Do you have any advice uh, on how I can work to get the Ministry of Education to accept our invitation? <laughs> you get the minister to be on the call. If you wanted Sid to do something or somebody else, what do you do? I ask him. She just asked. Ask okay. I'll and keep, they, I'll, and they I'll say keep yes. asking. Do they say yes to Rushi? <laughs> yes. They say yes, Tito, because they know that if they don't, she's going to look a lot more closely at what they're not doing, <laughs> the best thing they're doing. So, um, Rasheen, uh, I, I know this is hard and it's late in the day for you. Um, and I love the new look, I think it's so adorable. Um, what advice could you give to someone if they came to you, one of your friends came to you and said, people were saying really mean things about them online and it hurt their feelings, but they didn't want to tell their parents because they're afraid their parents wouldn't understand. Well, um, you block them. And if you don't feel comfortable telling your parents, then you can tell another adult that can help you. And we call those trusted adults, right? So what makes an adult trustworthy? Can any parent be a trusted adult or any adult be a trusted adult? No, no, not just anybody. Somebody you trust, like your therapist or your doctor or... Again, my trusted? Yes. I Do your friends trust me? Yes. Yeah. What about teachers? Can some teachers be trusted adults? And older aunts, uncles, cousins? Yes. Even sometimes your friends' parents, because your friends go to your mom sometimes, right? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> so if you were going to give parents who didn't know this, who want to be trustworthy, one thing that they should think about to be better as a trusted adult, what would you tell them? What do you think your friends thought to be? Because you don't yell at them? Because I don't yell at them. <laughs> don't overreact. That's good. Are mm -hmm. they trust? Are, are, do they judge you? That is, is, can I interrupt there? That That's uh, because they don't yell at you. That's, uh, I mean, that's one of the things that parents don't realize is uh, they sometimes uh, hit the panic button uh, when something bad happens. And that usually prevents children, being kids, teens, or young adults, to to go to them uh, when they need uh, help. So uh, that's really a, a really important point to to stress to stress out to to adults. You know, uh, don't panic and don't uh, react emotionally when your kids uh, get in, in trouble online or offline, for that matter. And I interrupted you, Perry, sorry. No, no, I was just, I've worked with Rasheen for so long. Sometimes she and I are better at talking to each other, even if somebody else is listening in. Um, <laughs> and 
so when we talked about being a good friend, remember we talked to a lot of kids about what it takes to be a good friend and why kids trust certain other kids. And the reason they all come to you and trust you is because you're not going to judge them, right? No. Do you ever tell their secrets and pass rumors? No. no. And why is that important? Well, if I want them to trust me, I can't do the things that they tell me not to do. And we have found that there are two things, one of two things that really good trusted friends do. They either give really good advice or they make the other person feel better, laugh or feel more comfortable. Which one are you? <laughs> you have to think about it. <laughs> You think you're more the quiet advice giver. I think so. <laughs> and, and do you bring your brother in to make them laugh? <laughs> your brother makes everyone laugh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What yeah. advice do you give to your brother about cyberbullying? Oh, dear. I, I hope he's not. <laughs> I won't tell him if you give me a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think he thinks he knows everything already, Perry. He well, he, he thinks he knows everything already. <laughs> I, think so. I think he thinks he's the expert now. I know. He told me. He's <laughs> yeah. quite a character, my little guy. So, yeah. So how do we get other kids involved? How do you get more kids to do this? How are you getting kids involved at school with your club? Tell them where to go and a yeah. safe place to talk. Yeah. So, Pino, how do we get more kids involved? Um, how, yeah, that's a good question. How do we help Tito find kids in Portugal and Brazil yeah. and in Mexico to get involved with what we're doing? Well, Roisin, you speak up. Tell them about making a safe place. You, what, what's happening with that? Like, how do you, how are you making a spot for the kids to talk at school? Um, you don't have to get into too many details, but you can. Um, every other day we have a club where people come in and they can talk about what's going on, but we ask everybody in the group not to share what's, what's being said in the group. Wow! Did you start okay. that outside? So, so you don't you don't share outside of that group. So it's um, a safe place for those students to share. Uh -huh. So whether it's concerns about usually probably about bullying or things that they're facing with their their junior high and their you know other issues. Yeah. So <laughs> making a safe place is important. Same with our girls group that we have. It's not you know it's just something we started in a community center, but um, making a safe place where the kids can have their phones out because that's where, like if they're using their phones, then you have an opportunity to talk about what they're doing on their phones. But mm -hmm. like, it's just having safe places where kids and whoever their trusted adults are can have conversations and feel safe to say, you know what, this is happening. Or, and some other kid will say, well, it's happened to me too, or, you know, or they'll ask questions and you just need to make those spaces where maybe it's even online where like this, where you can have some mm -hmm. conversations. And how, how, how did it start it? In school well it's a school club that is small at the moment so they're just trying to make that the, a safe place for them to okay sessions. would the guide and, would and, the guidance uh, counselors at school help yeah. yes so yeah. tito maybe you can reach out to the guidance counselors at the school and some of the kids at the school and see if they want to get this started i'd love to have more kids from Portugal um, and Brazil and other places that aren't English speaking all the time to weigh in so we have that perspective. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We have additional comments here. Abilio Carvalho uh, is saying, um, I love Legos and my nephews too. Thankfully, there are kids with the guts to stand up and talk against bullying, but sometimes the words are missing, right? And do you also feel that, you know, sometimes we don't find the words to express w how we feel if we are being uh, bullied or if we witness somebody being bullied? Uh, do you also uh, 
do you or your colleagues also uh, feel that, Roisin? Sometimes yeah. mm -hmm. it's difficult to find the words to express your feelings. I think so. But I think what? one of the key things with Perry's program, sorry, Perry, mm -hmm. no. has taught Roisin. And so it's, it's hard for the kids probably that are being bullied to express that. Roisin mm -hmm. is great to know what to do when she's being bullied or a friend. So she has those words because Perry's taught them to her. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like she has the stop, block, and tell, the trusted adult. Like Perry's got really easy tips to teach kids, especially when they're young, and then mm -hmm. they, when they get older. So like she doesn't have like you know when it comes to safety, she's got it because Perry taught it to her. And it's Very interesting. That they teach us about you know mental health. If someone has a, a suicide or, you know, starts talking about suicide, you have to be direct. Like, that's what the classes will teach people now, youth workers, who anyone volunteering. Like, how do you address that situation? You have to be direct. You have to know your words before you're in the situation. Mm -hmm. And so the Roisin's situation. very good at words, but uh, sometimes in a public setting and on video, she doesn't feel the same connection that she does no, in I real life. I understand that perfectly. But, but she is, there's something about her that is very calming and that makes other people feel safe when they're around her. Mm -hmm. So Roisin, is there a way we can help kids who want to help their friends, uh, help their friends feel safer to talk to them? Um, well, uh, listen to what they're saying and then let them finish everything before you talk to them afterwards. Be a good listener. And I'm a oh. terrible listener because I'm always interrupting you. <laughs> I'm like, is she talking to us, Perry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that's also very, very important. I, I was thinking about it. Uh, so actually, Roisin is more of a good listener than, you know, talking. She's, she's good because she knows how to listen. And that's a very, very also important point to 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 underline, you know, uh, because many times what happens is uh, I have a story. I have to tell a story with my younger uh, son. He, he was probably around 10 years old and I was at the computer, you know, absorbed in my professional uh, things to do and whatnot. And he came to me. And uh, he said, uh, Dad, uh, are you busy? I said, yeah, you know, I have to finish this article that uh, I'm writing to the newspaper and I have to send it today because uh, today is the, um, the deadline. I said, and he said, oh, okay. But all of a sudden, a light bulb lighted up in my brain. Uh, and uh, I asked, Afonso, but wh why are you asking uh, if I'm busy? Well, you know, if you weren't busy, we could cuddle each other, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, Afonso, you know, let, okay, I'll write the, finish the article later on uh, and give me a hug, you know, if, and please remind me when I'm too distracted on very important things that uh, there's nothing more important than, you know, you giving me a hug and, I hugging you back. So this goes to show that sometimes parents uh, are very distracted with very important things and they don't have that ability that uh, Roisin was uh, talking about, the ability to listen. I mean, things go in one ear and, uh, you know, and suddenly they're out the other and we're not containing what uh, our children have told us. So listening is really, really, really uh, important. Um, so thank you for being a good listener, uh, Roshin, because I'm sure your colleagues uh, in school and your friends really uh, appreciate it. Everybody loves to have a friend that uh, has that uh, capability, that skill of listening and it's uh, not easy because many times we are absorbed in ourselves and we don't listen to to others as well as we should 
and I'm already speaking too much, as you can see. So back to the comments. Uh, Ed330 is saying, interesting aspect of parents not causing a rift due to emotional reactions. I have had similar concerns expressed by students in Zimbabwe. And do you have any comment on that, Perry? Or Roshin or Heather? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll step in while Roshin's thinking about her answer. Um, <laughs> what we always said from the very beginning, 25 years ago, is that parents shouldn't overreact. We call it mama drama. What? I can't believe it. You did this. Oh, I'm going to call somebody. I'm going to call whatever. And we always said not to do that. And there was a young girl who was eight years old from the UK who was one of our program. And she said, well, equally, I don't worry about my mom overreacting. I worry about her underreacting. So I come to her when I'm being cyberbullied or things go wrong. And she just kind of brushes it off and says, well, it's okay. Just ignore them. Um, and that hurts a great deal because only 5% of the young people we have polled out of 40,000 middle school students in North America will tell their parents if they're being cyberbullied. And uh, mm -hmm. if they take the risk of telling you, worry that you're going to overreact or take away the technology or judge them or make a big deal about it and call their friends parents or their friends, we need to also recognize that if they come to us and they need help and we don't give it to them and we don't care and give it the importance they deserve, it's just as hurtful to them. And so we need to find, like Goldilocks, not too hot, not too cold, just right. What do you think about that, Roisin? Do you think that some parents just don't care and don't know what to say? What should a parent say if their kids come to them and the parents don't know anything about cyberbullying? You know, I think I think from our situation, from what we've seen is um, many of the parents are kind of also wrapped up into it mm. with their own, like in some families where the cyberbullying can be happening to the kids and the aunts and the uncles and the parents. And, you know, it's just a big circle. Like, I think it's happening so much. Mm -hmm. I guess they were seen in some cases the kids might. Especially around hockey and sports. Are you seeing a lot more of that? where their teams and kids are chosen or not chosen and those kind of things you're seeing sort of family-wide cyberbullying or is that just a U.S. thing? Um, <laughs> I don't really hang around people who do sports. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. So, <laughs> But I bet Tito's played soccer in his days. Yes, and that's really some of the troubles here is with soccer, because sometimes, you know, parents get so heated up uh, while their kids are, are playing that we have had cases in, you know, riots, uh, uh, f parents fighting each other because of the, the games their children are, are playing, which is regrettable. But I have one thing that I th find uh, I saw a few days and related to parents not getting, uh, not hitting the panic uh, mode button. Uh, and uh, and I think that's only, not only f valuable, not only for um, cyberbullying, for uh, sexual abuse, for any, it's valuable for any trouble. And it, uh, it was told by a lady, and she shared it uh, on Twitter and she said, told us a story that her father uh, wrote her a note and left the note on uh, a drawer on her dressing uh, room. And uh, the note uh, said, this is a reminder that whenever you get into trouble for any trouble whatsoever, please bring this note to me as a reminder for my priority would not be to, uh, um, uh, you know, overreact. Uh, sense, sense, overreact or censor you or, or whatever, but to help you get out of the situation you found yourself in. And I find this is such a great piece of advice. Every parent should do that for her daughters or, or, or sons. Because our children, we can teach our children the values you want to, you know, everything, give them advice, safety advice and whatnot. But 
they are they have their own autonomy and sometimes they can make bad choices and uh, if they have that note they can you know come up to us for for help and that I, I I think it's really important and I had the case here in Portugal of a 13 year old girl that uh, was subject to sextortion because she uh, committed made a bad judgment and shared the nude photo of her with somebody she knew only from the internet and as a result she was blackmailed and she found the courage to tell her mother and many times kids don't find that uh, courage because they are afraid of how their parents will uh, react and uh, when they come to the parents or a trusted adult as you've said in the case of this uh, 13 year old girl it prevented her actually because she was being blackmailed to meet the guy and whom she w thought was 16 but in fact was 51 uh, and she he had already abused uh, another 16 year old uh, girl so the fact that she found the courage to talk to her mother about it uh, prevented her from being sexually abused and uh, th this advice is also valuable for cyberbullying cases. So it's really, really important. Uh, we create a relationship with our children that they know they can trust us and that we won't uh, get mad uh, because it's not their fault. Uh, Ana Luisa Rodrigues says, it, it is difficult for us to educate our children about nonviolence and at school they come across other children who do, do not know what freedom means and have no limits. What can we do? I think that's a good thing to talk to this um, because their parents will have found the same problems. We're actually with a global organization called Art of Living. Art of Living has 400 disciples around the world founded by a guru, Ravi Shankar, in Galoria, and works all over the world. All of his paid volunteers using our model. Um, and he's working with us on mindfulness. And he sent me to schools with us to cyberbullying from for tips and point mindfulness on breathing and meditation and self-worth that helps the kids avoid violence, become more resilient. They've done a lot of work in schools and they found that games and gang uh, membership dropped because of these things that sound so simple. And all of it's so complicated. Um, we're finding loneliness. And we're doing a number of that with the Department of Homeland Security, believe it or not, uh, to look at loneliness. In it. But if you're having with other kids in school and other parents in school, then you better go to the school and make sure that the and keeps the kid. Uh, I think we lost you, Perry, or have you stopped uh, speaking? I stopped speaking. Okay, okay. <laughs> I said keep safe was the end of it. it was just yeah, okay. Just <laughs> Second there too, Tito. Um, I know one of the conferences we had with Perry, um, it's interesting when we talk about the trusted adults, it's really important within the schools too that the that the students have like a teacher. If they, you know, if they don't have a parent that they feel safe with a teacher. And I remember, and usually the kids will, like when we go into a school, they'll say, you know, we'll ask them, do you have a trusted adult in your life? And, and you know, do you have a trusted teacher? And most of the kids will. And and it was interesting, we were at one high school once and, and they didn't have someone in the high school, this group of girls, I think there was probably 12 of them. And they said, no, there's no teacher in this school that we would go to. And I was, I was, it was so sad to me to think, you know, here, you know, they're here all day and they don't yeah. think they have a trusted adult in one of their teachers where they could go to if they were experiencing something like this. So, you know, I think it's really important that we, you know, we think about where the kids are and who those trusted adults are for them. And, and you know, it, it's pretty sad to think it, to go through a whole, you know, year at school and not think that there's a teacher that you could just knock on their door and feel like you have a safe conversation like that. So I hope that doesn't happen in many schools, but I think it's certainly something you want to be asked students every now and then when you have a session, you know, do you have a trusted adult? And if not, you know, what's going on in the schools that, the, you know, that the teachers aren't, or there isn't someone that's presenting that. 
Yeah. We're actually have a program to teach parents and other adults to be trusted adults. What do we trustworthy? Kids are teaching them that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, another thing that I would like to add to the story that I told, just told is that the first person to the, that 13 year old girl went to was a, a school a school friend and the school friend uh, told her oh i'll go along with you to meet the the guy you know like the prince valiant helping the lady in distress and that could m have meant two people in trouble uh, and fortunately she asked another school friend and the other school friend told her i'll also uh, go with you if you need you don't need to go alone but before you have to tell your mother about it so the fact that uh, she got this good piece of advice from a school friend uh, brings us hope and tells us how important it is that schools also have the sort of clubs that Roisin and Heather were talking about, uh, where uh, the, the, the students can meet and talk about things, you know, that worry them, that uh, are uh, troubling them and so forth. And if they're in, in a certain school, if there is no uh, trusted adult uh, in their lives also, uh, maybe they'll have a, a colleague uh, that has a trusted adult that they can go to, you know. We have another question here from uh, Adelina Silva. And she's saying, uh, I believe the key words are communication, critical thinking, trust, sharing, and above all, one has to feel that living in a community, real or virtual, is a big deal. So we do need to behave accordingly with other members, respect their uh, differences and I, I think Roisin has also touched on that and, and, and Perry when you were talking about the experience uh, with uh, Native Americans and uh, in Canada uh, the now the name f escapes me how first do you call first nation first nation yeah uh, so I think that was uh, already uh, addressed. Uh, Abilio Carvalho says, uh, Heather made mention of creating a safety net. The trust and support of parents is essential to avoid this. Is it not? I think the safety net of the trust. Well, I mean, I think, I think, I think I'm reading this right, that I do mm -hmm. think this trust and support of the parents is needed. I just think that that's not always going to be the case for unfortunately many of the kids like you know we we want the parents to be in that role and we want the parents to be that voice but it's really about having those trusted adults because kids find their trusted adult wherever they find them and it's not usually the parent it's great if it is but mm -hmm. i think it's pretty rare that the kids are feeling that the trusted adult is always going to be the parent especially you know when you get into some of these really difficult situations yeah, and this is a societal issue as well. So in Canada, uh, I'm in the United States, and our children don't have the same way around in the way we did in the old So a little bit more in where you have aunts and uncles, cousins are still in the same community, but they have that. And they have parents, often a single parent, and to others. So they end up being different. Kids in Portugal perhaps uh, look to their parents more than kids in North America might. I don't know. Um, what do you think? Is it more family or do you kids in Portugal as much to and other trusted adults, their parents? I mean, in Portugal, my feeling. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, in, in, it, it really depends. Uh, for instance, if we're talking about Lisbon in Porto, uh, which are the main cities, the main cities, uh, we have a, a problem, which is uh, families nowadays are, are divided. You know, they don't live in the same uh, uh, neighborhood uh, and sometimes they don't even live in the same uh, city. We are a small country. And as we grew up until, let's say, a generation ago, uh, it was common 
to to be uh, my, my children, for instance, my my mother-in-law would look after them during uh, the day. Uh, they didn't need to go to uh, daycare. Uh, practically, they went, but uh, only a ha half a day. And then when they went to school and when they were back, I was at work, my wife was at work, but they always had my, my their grandmother, you know. So those family ties are really uh, important. And uh, those uh, adults, the family is still an important uh, circle. But what happens is the, during the past, uh, say, 20 years, uh, families are not living in the same places uh, anymore. Uh, the exception is actually if uh, you live in the countryside, in small villages or so. But if you live in Porto and Lisbon, the main cities, uh, you don't have your grandparents with you. You don't have your uncles and aunts living uh, nearby. Uh, you know, and as you were saying, many uh, single parents families uh, nowadays, or if they're not single parents, uh, both parents uh, are working uh, and children spend most of their times mostly uh, at school. And that uh, is sometimes a, a problem uh, regarding uh, having trusted adults, for instance, as you were saying. Rasheen, I think that young people talk to the ones to be their ahead of time. And I, you know, I, when I trust you, I'd like to be to you with an open, or do you need them? Did you catch Perry? You're kind of getting out there, Perry, but I think she was asking if um, you tell them in advance or you find them when you need them. You're trusted adults. I, I find them when I need them. Mm -hmm. have, have you ever found somebody you really bad decision? Perhaps should have chosen somebody else? Not their fault, but perhaps they didn't know how to be a trust. You didn't know that. So, uh, yeah, you're kind of, I think she said if um, you have an experience where any of your friends probably went to somebody and it wasn't a good choice, they got bad advice or they, you know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. and then, it's, it's in, the girl that I was talking about taking a picture and she went to wasn't it? kid who said I'll go with you and she asked somebody else have you had a situation this I don't know the end have you ever had a situation he came to you advice you knew you needed to be in didn't want to get an involved oh I, I know one I can think of an example <laughs> and we always have to be careful because we can't say names you know especially when yeah. you have to be. <laughs> but remember at girls' day? And so what happens now is, like, uh, you know, she, Roisin's on social media, and I'm on the same, uh, you know, most of her friends are following me, except for the odd one, but sh she will say, she'll notice if her friends are engaging in social media activity that's dangerous or risky. Or, mm -hmm. And do you remember how you flagged somebody in our group and, and you said we had to have a chat? Remember that uncomfortable talk by the stage with one of your friends? Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, cause she, would she be getting advice from anyone else on that? I don't think so. And you had been watching what she was doing and said, we need to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, you're probably right, but we're going to do it together. <laughs> so, uh, but you like, I mean, she certainly has people in her life and uh, many of the kids do, but you know, sometimes someone needs to start the conversation. Uh, not before, but I could, I was just thinking of her and I was just wondering if she'd ever went to anyone else for help before. I don't know if she has many items that she can go to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Either it's two of you, your mom always help. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, a really important uh, question, uh, do you think? Uh, to, for instance, in, in a school, if you're doing a survey, uh, to ask the students, or if you're doing a focus group with students, to ask them uh, th that question. Uh, in this school, do you have a trusted adult that you can go to if you find yourself uh, in trouble. 
uh, and that can give some important leads to to the school board uh, on the needs that they might have or not. Uh, whether there are many kids that have found their uh, trusted adults uh, within the school setting uh, or not. Heather, I have a question for you. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> we've seen uh, that uh, Roisin, you know, she's basically uh, an activist on, uh, you know, thinking positive and preventing bullying and uh, internet safety and digital uh, citizenship. And we've had uh, other cases uh, of uh, teen activists and child uh, activists, and two names came to mind, Malala, that uh, Afghanistan girl from uh, Afghanistan, and uh, Greta uh, Thunberg from uh, Sweden, on uh, Malala for education and Greta Thunberg uh, on uh, the environmental uh, concerns. Um, and what I've seen, for instance, with uh, the case of uh, Greta, not so much with Malala, is there's been a terrible uh, backlash uh, criticizing her parents for allowing the child to be exposed and to uh, things like that. And I would like to, to hear uh, what are your thoughts on, on that, on, uh, you know, on youth participation, which obviously entails some uh, exposure, media uh, exposure, and, uh, you know, uh, talks or uh, about manipulation or uh, exposing children to the media. Yep. Well, you know, it is quite interesting. And uh, one thing I always say, because I like uh, the kids always lead the way for me. Like, I mean, I had no intentions of Roisin, but I met Perry at a breakfast meeting and she's like, oh, come, come, come. And I'm like, well, I have my daughter with me today and she shouldn't probably be there. It's a bit too old. She's like, we'll bring her and then everything just snowballed there from there because when these two are together they're like you know they become one little mind they're like, they're like best friend it's very <laughs> it started when Roisin was young so the thing is is that i've always gone where she's led with everything with her art and with her interests and the same with my son but you know when i look at Greta and what i've always told my kids is when children speak adults listen and that's why it's important for Roisin to speak up, even when, you know, you know that she's a listener and speaking is not her probably best suit, but she, when she speaks and when you wait long enough and you hear her, it's there, like she knows it. And um, when the kids speak with Perry, the everyone stops, the adults listen. When Greta speaks, look at the world, like everyone's listening, like in Malala, like this is important. This is why children need to speak because I think adults talk too much now. And so we just start tuning each other out you hear little powerhouses telling the adults what they need to do, people stop and they listen. And that's, mm -hmm. you know, you can protect your children. We have people like Perry that protect children. We have people like you, Tito. Like, so I, I'm not fearful for Roisin, you know, facing backlash from people because I've got supporters in her corner. Like, you know, like we're with an organization that is doing this. We're volunteers with, so I, I'm not concerned about that. Like we, that's, that is what it is, and, she, and we probably live in a great place as well, so that's also very helpful, but, sure. um, you know, it's important for kids to speak up. Like, as you were saying earlier with what the, the Children's Rights Act says, you know, if they're not talking, we're not listening, and we're certainly not listening to other adults these days, so. Roisin, remember when that's you cool. first learned about Malala? <laughs> I think so. I remember you got the book, and you were so excited that you were reading it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you yeah. So a lot of people think that you're a lot like her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I sure. do. And I think That's you're too wonderful. Than Perry. Sure. <laughs> I think we need to nominate her for a Nobel Prize. Mm -hmm. Can you okay. Need her to clean her room too. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. She'll never learn that one from me, as you know, Heather. But the person who won the Nobel Peace Prize alongside Malala from India, they, there were two people who won that year. He knows all about Roisin, and he's waiting to meet her. So I might not be able to introduce you to Malala, but I can introduce you to some other Nobel laureates if you want. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, it, you can't get a better promise than that, can you? <laughs> okay, Perry, we, we really...
reaching, uh, we actually we're over the hour, uh, and uh, I would like to tell uh, our followers, those that are listening to us, uh, what we'll be having uh, the following um, tomorrow, actually. Uh, and uh, for the next week. So I'll, I'm going to leave you uh, with a, a question uh, and then you'll give me a few uh, two or three minutes to introduce uh, the programs that we'll be having uh, on the following sessions. Uh, and then I'll come back to you for uh, your answers. Uh, for Perry, the question would be what can we do or should we do to get children involved uh, on cyberbullying uh, prevention? Uh, and uh, actually, it's the same question for the three of you, for you also, either and for Roisin. So give me a minute or two. I'll be back to uh, after I introduce uh, the guests for uh, our next uh, shows. Uh, our next show will be tomorrow at uh, 9.30 p.m. from Portugal. It will be in Portuguese. And we'll have uh, Inês Freire de Andrade. She's a 20-something-year-old uh, woman. So she's recently married. And uh, she is the vice president of the No Bully Association uh, in Portugal. And she will be talking uh, with us on the subject of putting an end to bullying through empathy and uh, helping each other. So that's uh, on October uh, the 18th. The session uh, will be uh, in Portuguese. Then we'll go for the weekend. There won't be any shows during the, the weekend. We'll be back on Monday. And on Monday, October 21st, we'll have Vicky Shotbolt from the United Kingdom. She is the uh, founder and CEO of Parent Zone in the UK. And she was a co chair of the UKC's. Uh, Commission that uh, uh, developed a, a digital resilience uh, framework, and we'll be talking with her about that digital resilience framework and the curriculum that Parentone has developed uh, from there. Uh, and then on the following day, on October uh, 22nd, we'll go back to Portuguese again and we'll have uh, Celeste Simões. She was involved in a European program that developed uh, the European Resilience uh, Curriculum. So she'll be talking with us uh, about uh, that uh, curriculum. So these are the sessions that are uh, lined up for uh, tomorrow, Friday, and then for Monday and uh, Tuesday. And now back uh, to our conversation. Uh, and I see that uh, we already have uh, a few uh, questions. Uh, but uh, before, can you give us your answer for, for the question that uh, I made? The first <laughs> no? All right. I'll yeah. go first and then Roisin can go second. Yeah. So sure. on this past Thursday, sure. this past Thursday, I took part in a World Economic Forum event in New York um, that brought together some of the world's leading experts on cyber safety, sexual exploitation of children, uh, bullying, a lot of the different issues. They all came together. Microsoft was there and people from the UN. It was wonderful. And I brought a 15-year-old teen angel in training and Daphne, who's a 10-year-old who's trying to follow in Roisin's shoes. And when everyone said, well, this is wonderful. You guys are here. I can't believe it. We're all talking about protecting children, but nobody thought to bring any. Roshi, uh, and Daphne turned to everybody and she said, that's the difference. First, Perry thought to bring us. Second, <laughs> second, she let us share what we think. She gives us a voice. Even if other groups brought kids, they'd only bring them and have them sit next to them quietly and look nice. Perry makes sure that we are empowered to share what we know. How can you solve problems about kids without including kids? 
So um, everybody cheered her. She was 10. So when she's 13 at Roisin's age, who knows what she's going to do. She and Roisin will have to share the Nobel Prize. Um, mm. And so if you want to get young people involved, you have to listen to them. You have to engage them. You have to know what you're talking about so they know that they're not wasting their time. And you have to give them a chance to find their voice um, and to do it their way. And it will change. When you work with a kid when they're seven, they're going to be very different when they're 13. And you have to find their styles and make sure that you're constantly relevant to what they're doing and that you're engaging them. Maybe they go off to uh, clean air and water. Maybe they decide to work with, uh, with homelessness. Maybe they work on other issues mm -hmm. and you may lose them. But you need to keep them engaged, listen, and value them. And if you do that, they will come. You, you may lose them, but the world will have them. <laughs> and as a result, we'll all benefit from that, isn't it? And yep. uh, <clears throat> Heather, maybe you also have your uh, opinions on that. I would like to love to hear them before we go to Roisin. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think a lot of this comes down to um, just keep, talk, keep talking about it, and but talking about it in ways that the kids want to hear about it. Um, you know, the, the, the approach, like as far as Perry was saying, and making sure the kids' voices are heard, make sure they feel trusted. Um, the, uh, the, like the small groups, whether it's at lunchtime or a small community group where the kids can come and feel with a trusted adult that they can talk about what goes on online. Because you know what, the parents, they look at us and they're like, well, they don't even know. They don't even know the apps. They don't even understand. But you need to, mm -hmm. you know, they need to feel like they can be teaching you and talking to you, but also have, they don't realize at the same time you're, you're going to help guide them as, a, as an adult. And, and so, you know, we need to create these spaces and we need to let the kids kind of guide us as, as the adults, I think. Mm -hmm. Great. Roisin, can we have your opinion or do you th need to think a little bit more? Um, we were talking at uh, ideas. You don't have to say what the, uh, like we were writing down ideas here on an envelope. So <laughs> yeah. during the break, it was like Jeopardy. <laughs> and are there any of those ideas you can share with us, Roisin? Um, we asked teachers around the world to include cyber safety in schools. Great. Nice. Mm -hmm. I like that. But how do we get kids to get involved? Did you write yeah. anything down about that? How do you want to get the kids there? What worked with you? Why did you get involved? Why did you want to work with me? You know what? I, I'm going to jump in here because I know she probably doesn't even remember. But you know what, Perry? It was a combination. When she met you, the passion that you have to help kids is contagious. <laughs> and the world needs more people that are as passionate as you are and when Perry talks to the kids she connects with them instantly and you can see that during this interview how Perry can get Roisin going when Tito and I can't can Perry know <laughs> and, uh, and when you see Perry work a group of rooms you really start to understand why Perry's got a very important role in this space because Absolutely. she kids and she once they've met her once they want to work with her like she's so passionate and the, there's something about these two that like is is unique as well and mm -hmm. uh, i don't think perry was as quiet as roisin perhaps <laughs> <laughs> there's something about them that is similar as passion but would you say that kind of sums it up a little bit yeah i think so yeah but roisin's smarter than i am that's the only difference but the good thing is she tries to make me look smarter so that's important but we we have to to work ways then uh, so that Perry can come to Portugal and share her experience in organizing hackathons uh, with kids uh, and uh, so that uh, we can also learn that part from her so that uh, we can do the same uh, on on a larger scale after that uh, in Portugal. I we, would love we, to do that, Tito, soon. Yes, we just have to, to work on that. We're reaching uh, the end of our, our session. It's been a nice uh, conversation. Apparently, and Luisa Rodrigues also loved it. Uh, Edith Utete from uh, uh, Zimbabwe uh, saying thank you for uh, a great uh, session. Thank you, Edith. 
Edith for uh, being uh, with us from uh, such a, a faraway uh, country. Uh, Abilio uh, Carvalho says another great uh, live uh, pity that Paris poor transmission with the interruptions. Actually, uh, it's fine. It, there was a period there that I had trouble uh, listening, but now it's fine. So if we Good. go f for another another hour, it will be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and the bill you uh, also says we should listen to children because they are the future, but we have to listen to them who and not who is sometimes behind the scenes, and that is to hear the future, or is it not? Yes, uh, I agree. It's the children that uh, we have to, to give uh, a voice, and we have to create an environment where they are uh, listened uh, on a regular uh, basis, not just uh, sometimes. Uh, <clears throat> so let me finish up uh, by saying that uh, you can visit the Share uh, You Care uh, website at shareyoucare.com. Uh, uh, you can also visit uh, Roshin's work uh, on uh, Twitter, uh, Share uh, Care, uh, You Care Today, and also on uh, Facebook, where they have also uh, a, a page, and on uh, Instagram. Also, there is a page on uh, Instagram. I, I had no idea you had a page on Instagram. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but we run Stop Cyberbullying on Facebook, Tito, you know, and Roisin's there. Uh -huh. And also, on, on I found a Share You Care uh, YouTube channel so with a few videos uh, there. So uh, perhaps uh, we'll find uh, sometimes more videos. Uh, also, Heather has a Twitter uh, account and a Facebook uh, page or profile where you can follow uh, also her work. By the way, you're an artist, right? Yes. Uh, Heather? Yeah, and we haven't uh, found time to talk about it, which is a pity, uh, because my background is also in arts. I was a graphic designer for 12 years, so uh, uh, I'll have to visit uh, your uh, pages, probably not only uh, LinkedIn, but I believe you will have more of your work shown uh, on uh, uh, Instagram. That's usually the more visual uh, website. Uh, Heather and Roisin, uh, thank you very, very much uh, for uh, being here. Well, thanks. It was our first live web chat. Uh, experience. Uh, well, let's hope it's the first of many to to follow. Uh, let me also uh, say that uh, uh, <clears throat> Perry has a website called Wired Safety. Actually, WiredSafety.com was was where I first met her. Uh, was from uh, this uh, website and organization. Uh, she also runs the Stop Cyberbullying uh, website that is being uh, remodeled, isn't it, uh, Perry? So the page is moving over org. Okay. And uh, also, uh, you can find this um, if you go to stopcyberbullying.org, you won't, you just have a splash page. But if you add the index to HTML, you find the old uh, content. Uh, also, Stop Cyberbullying is on uh, Facebook uh, as well. So you can follow uh, Perry's uh, work there. And also, Perry has an, uh, an account uh, on uh, Twitter. But uh, and on Instagram, Perry, I found you on Instagram. I didn't know that you had an Instagram account. Well, I also have it, but I don't share I used to be on the safety Facebook, and so they meet. I think it has infant of me. Okay. <laughs> but you're also on, on Facebook. You share quite often on, on Facebook. But where, if you really want to follow uh, Perry, uh, I advise you to go to LinkedIn because that's where she shares most of uh, her work. So, Perry, uh, a huge thank you also for, uh, first of all, to put me in touch with Heather and, and Roisin 
and second to you know make yourself uh, available uh, to for for this uh, live and it's been a pleasure talking to you Antonio João Silva also says great session thank you ladies and Gloria Silva also says thank you for this opportunity and great session and to everybody I say thank you for following us thank you to our guests to for being uh, here uh, with us and uh, don't forget uh, tomorrow uh, we have more so bye bye Bye. See you tomorrow, and Heather, Roisin, and Perry, see you soon. Ciao. If you're cyberbully, stop, block, and tell. <laughs> Great piece of advice. Stop, <laughs> block, and tell. That's the way to stop cyberbullying. Bye. Bye. Ciao.